So there's a number of different crops uh, that they have learned to produce, which both helps them for food and uh, cash, money, and helps the animals by feeding them in a very uh, critical moments so that they don't put too much pressure on the pastures. So this is both for conservation and for uh, livelihoods. What about not irrigated agriculture? E even though the climate is dry, but if you take barley, for example, this... Uh, orto. 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 This barley. Um, there are many varieties of barley. Some need water, irrigated water, for irrigation. Some don't need it. Some are tall, some are short, some are, because barley and wheat grew in this region. Uh, Iran and the countries around it are the centers of, are the center of origin of wheat and barley. So we can imagine, just like in Mexico, there's many, many varieties of maize in Peru, there is many, many thousands of varieties of uh, potatoes in Iran and this, this region. There is many varieties of, uh, of uh, barley and uh, wheat. But what happens? Usually the government and the, the, uh, the educated extensionists and so forth, what do they do? They find a variety and they say, they produce a variety and they say, everybody should use this which means all the fantastic biological diversity of uh, these crops, these plants, disappears. So what are we doing? We are, f right now, we have a team, this moment, we have a team of four or five people from Senesta out in the field looking for wild relatives of uh, orzo, of uh, barley. We take them, we go to the field, we find that next to some rocks, in some dry areas, in the worst possible conditions, there's some wild uh, barley growing. Ah! We grab some of them. Not all of them, but some of them. And uh, then we may even mix whatever we get. Okay? And we do something we call evolutionary plant breeding. How? This mixture, we give it to the uh, nomads, sometimes farmers, and we say, take a plot of land, doesn't have to be a good piece of land, throw these there, and see what comes up. Even now, under conditions of drought, the ones that come out, even if there is three, four, five units that come out, those are the ones you want, because they've been able to produce in these very difficult conditions. The rest you don't want, doesn't matter. So these ones you take, Next time you plant them and you get more and those that make it you take and plant again. After several generations you have enough to use as a variety. So you get a new variety which exists but is not used. They are usually government research stations and extension agents and university professors. I've been one so I don't mind saying the truth uh, are usually too stupid to know these things because they imitate what happens in Italian universities, French universities, American universities, German universities because we go there to study, we learn the wrong things, we bring back but the conditions are very different. You yourself mentioned uh, drought means much less water for agriculture. What do we do? Well, This is the kind of thing we're doing. It's an adaptive response to this. We call it democratization of agricultural research.